Okay, this is part two for teaching textbooks for algebra. I thought I would show you the online for moms who are curious, because I know I was. So you just put the disc in, and after it downloads, it takes a couple seconds. So um, when you want to use it, all you have to do is click on the icon on your desktop, okay? And then this pops up. So as my son, I would just type in password okay and then it opens up da -da, like this so this is what it looks like okay so if he was to do lesson one like any lesson okay like it has to this is the disc one so it only goes up to 19 okay then it gives you the, there's a test chap this chapter one and chapter two um, and then like I showed you in the first one there's lots of disc for the entire year so let's say okay we need to do lesson six so we do this, click on that, then it shows you lecture, the practices, and then all the problems for that lesson. So I would do the lecture first. Okay, it's loading. <laughs> Lesson six, algebra notation. In arithmetic, most people use this symbol to show multiplication, and they use this symbol to show division. But it turns out these symbols aren't used very much at all in algebra or more advanced math. Algebra actually has its own special way of writing multiplication and division. In math, a way of writing something is called notation. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about algebra notation. But it's also the way we write things in even more advanced math. In algebra, instead of writing 5 multiplied by x like this, the way it's done is you just put the 5 and x right next to each other, like this. So using proper algebra symbols, if you had an equation like 5 times x equals 35, the proper way to write it is 5x equals 35. And there are several advantages to doing it this way. Just pushing the 5 and x together takes up less space, and that helps because you know algebra problems can be pretty long. It's also less confusing because the old multiplication symbol, the old time symbol from arithmetic, it actually looks a lot like an x, so that can confuse you. But now let me ask you a question. Which is the correct way to write the equation 4 times x equals 24? See, and then ask you a question, then you have to figure it out, and you're like, um, um. That's right. See? And it's One important kind of thing fun you need to remember it. about writing a number multiplied by an x. So I'll just pause it, okay? So then, if you want to do the practice, you need to solve this equation by undoing 3x equals 3 fifths. And okay. make sure to undo the algebra way. Time out for a hint. And then it gives you little hints you can click on if you want it, if you need it. So anyway, that's just an example. And then the problems, too, are like this. And you just enter it in like that, okay? Then the grade book, right here, you just get to see what lesson your kid did. This is it for the first, you know, it keeps going here. So it shows you the total problems that there were, how many he, they completed, the number they got right in their score. So automatically grades for you, which is so nice because then at the end of the year you can you know, calculate their um, grade point average and everything that you can add in, especially if you're doing this for high school, for freshmen, um, when you're keeping track of points and credits and everything, you could do that. Um, so it's perfect, I love it. And you can also, in the parent one, you can go in and there's tests too. So it shows all the lessons. They go up to 142 and then the test. So you need um, to solve this equation by undoing 3x. So if I go back into this, okay, so as a parent, oops. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot my best 
password. Anyway, you click into there and you get, I don't know if I have the caps on. Anyway, you click in there and you get to um, view the same thing as I just showed you on the, on the grade book. And then you get to, you can go back and redo, or like this, okay. All right, get into the grade book, change the password, da, da, da. Um, I wanna get into the grade book. So it's the same thing that they could see, right? But the thing is here, is you can go in there, you can delete the lesson. If they got too many wrong or you wanna redo it, you delete it, and then they have to go back and start there and do it. So you could redo things, you can play around with, you know, like if they, um, they did, oh, I want them to get more correct for this. I want them to have a better grade for this week or this lesson. So it's fun, you can totally, and then you could print things if you want it. But see how simple? Super, super simple. So anyway, like I said, teaching textbooks, check it out.